So hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, Global Fleet 10 minute video podcast. Although many of you already know, I will briefly tell you about Holman Enterprises. So it's uh, the US based company and it covers many aspects of the automotive industry. So including parts and distribution, fabrication and upfitting dealerships in addition to vehicle leasing and fleet management through ARI. So recently the group has appointed key leadership positions in the company's newly created home and commercial team. And shedding light on this and other things today is Rick Tussaw, the company's newly appointed executive vice president and chief commercial officer. So hello, Rick, how are you doing hello, today? Hello, Daniel, I'm doing great, thanks for having me. Okay, so we're just gonna have a few questions for you here. Um, before we start, so I need to address this headline that hit the papers not too long ago. So, Wills and Donnan merged. Um, I don't know, were, you, were you surprised? And briefly speaking, I don't know, how, how do you think it will impact the market? You no, know, thanks for asking. No, it's uh, there was, I think, two weeks in a row where we saw some pretty big announcements within the fleet industry. Um, surprised? I, I don't know if I get surprised anymore, Daniel, actually. Um, you know, <laughs> well, a lot of things happen. going on um, in the automotive space overall. Hard to say I was surprised, uh, I guess. You never know who may uh, come together and, and look for new opportunities. So not terribly surprised. Um, yeah, it's, it's a big undertaking, right? Merging two uh, very significant companies. We obviously at Fleet Industries, a fairly small industry. And we know, uh, we know people, industry colleagues of both companies. Um, they're taking on obviously a, a pretty big undertaking, bringing those two, uh, two organizations together. So end of the day, uh, we wish them well with what's, uh, what's ahead of them on their journey. Okay, so um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about Holman. So you were executive vice president and chief commercial officer uh, for ARI in the past, and now you're mm -hmm. holding the same position for Holman Enterprises. How do your responsibilities uh, differ today? And, and could you give us an idea of your of your short and midterm goals? Sure, no, no problem. Yeah, it was similar title, um, but as you, you had a pretty good setup there for Holman at the beginning. And, you know, my role um, before was pretty much focused on the fleet side. So pretty much focused on fleet outside of the US. I had just come out of leading the Canadian business. Um, I on the border of our joint venture in Mexico, uh, which I still do today. And I've been supporting our new businesses or newer businesses, I guess, in the UK and Germany in terms of their business development efforts as well as um, being one of the ARI representatives along with Rob Hill on our GFS board. Mm -hmm. Primarily where my focus was, that was uh, a couple of years ago. I then transitioned to uh, the chief marketing officer for Holman. So that's what I've been doing pretty much the last couple of years. So I was bringing a few different marketing departments together into one team. And now um, this commercial group is really sitting across all of the organizations that you just mentioned in your opening. Um, so includes the disciplines of marketing, market and product development, and customer experience. Um, in terms of, you know, some goals, uh, really, you know, the, this group has come together with a purpose of, uh, you know, looking for opportunities. It's a forward-looking group. It's all about growth uh, through this disruptive market. It's ensuring that we're guiding our business customers um, to make sure that, you know, we're strong, we're focused on the right things. If we see an opportunity, how do we accelerate bringing that opportunity to market? bringing some great, greater discipline maybe to our uh, product and service uh, um, opportunities, development opportunities. And all of these have the customer in mind. What's that end customer experience that we're trying to create? You know, we all talk about trying to remove friction and, and doing, uh, being easy to do business with, and that remains fundamental to all the things that we would work on as a team. And could you tell, tell our listeners a little bit about who's on the commercial team? I think there are a few people that are on the team that we that I actually wrote about it. It was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. There may be some uh, familiar names out there for folks. So, um, on the marketing side, um, I'm grateful for all the the people I'm surrounded with. First of all, but um, Rick Deek and Craig Balfour, who both long term, both Holman and ARI folks, are have been leading the marketing department, and that will continue to continue to lead the marketing our efforts there. Um, Denise Wildish, who's been with ARI for I think more than 25 years, I don't want to date her, um, but uh, tons of experience on the customer facing side. She has been our champion of the voice of the customer for many years and led our client advisory board on ARI. She now sits on top of client experience for all of Holman. And then uh, Joe Foster, who some folks may be familiar with, he, uh, he came to us and really through the auto truck business 
Um, and then into ARI, he's going to be leading our team around market and product development with a really near-term focus, as to no surprise to a lot of people, on making sure that we are organized effectively around the conversations on electrification. Oh, so that's good. You just talked about, that's my next question. My next question is <laughs> electrification. So sure. as you and probably everybody's watching knows that it's, it's gaining momentum around the globe. And um, mm -hmm. so how do you see this sector of the fleet market evolving in North America over the next few years? And what does ARI or, Hall, or Hall, Holman as a group uh, offer customers in terms of electrified options? Sure. And uh, that's a great question. Again, you talk about disruption. That's a, that's a big one right there. Um, you know, North America, you know, a little behind maybe some other countries, especially in, in Europe in terms of its development, although we all seem to have one common theme when we talk about electrification, and that's the stability and resiliency or maybe even reliability of the infrastructure. So a lot of work clearly in North America, both the U.S. and Canada, still ahead of us in terms of the infrastructure uh, around us. Clearly, we've had this extra little uh, wobble with the supply chain challenges through the pandemic. So making sure that we get to a point where, you know, asset availability, broader asset availability for our customers is uh, is out there in terms of what's what they need to consider, what's fit for purpose. And, you know, we manage um, of, of all the units under our management, it's everything from a, you know, a sales vehicle, a traditional car up to the heavier upfitted trucks. And, you know, our responsibility under the headline, I guess, of sustainability is to make sure that those vehicles are fit for purpose. And I think, you know, while the near-term focus is around electrification, we have to keep an eye on other options um, that are sustainable. It could be one of the natural gases. It could be something like hydrogen down the road, um, but they need to be fit for purpose. Um, in terms of what we are doing, I think we're doing a lot of things that our, that our friends in the industry are doing, and that's really ramping up our, our competencies and our capabilities about how we support um, our, uh, our customers and our prospective customers on that journey to carbon reduction and sustainability. You know, there's, a, there's some big shifts out there. There's a lot of new conversations. There's new players. Um, the ecosystem is going to look very different than what they're used to, and there's going to be some big changes in terms of driver behavior. Uh, when you're prepared to get into an electrified vehicle versus just going down and thinking you could fill up your vehicle uh, on the way to your job. So there's a whole, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that we're working on to try to simplify that conversation and, and help our customers along both from this high level strategic conversation right through to what the execution looks like over the next few years. Okay, well, yeah, there's a lot of information, a lot of interesting stuff and insight yeah. uh, that he gave us, um, Rick. I don't know. I had one more question, but I don't know if we have time. If you can say it in maybe like uh, 30 seconds or so, um, what other ways do you see corporate fleet or even mobility evolving in North America in the coming years, uh, briefly speaking, besides electrification? Um, well, it's a great question too. It'll be interesting to see. I think a lot of us has, have learned, and a lot of our customers have learned um, how to be productive to having people on the road or people flying. Uh, we've leveraged like you and I are today, leveraging technology and we've seen increases in productivity by people not necessarily getting into a car or getting into a train or a plane to do their job. So I think a lot of us are very interested with the impact on technology is going to have on mobility in general, shared or future. Um, so I guess we'll have to see how we all come out with the new normal is going to be, you know, looking like and how we're all impacted, but greater focus on mobility in general, I think, especially in very dense urban markets, I think it's going to be a big focus in the yeah, next few years. It's Seems like it's going that way. Well, yeah, I guess I'll be running out of time, but I appreciate your time, Rick, and um, thanks for all the insight. Uh, and just for those over there uh, are outside there are watching, uh, don't forget to stop by, of course, globalfleet.com for more insight on the fleet and mobility industry. And last but not least, mark your calendar. So Global Fleet Conference 2022 will be taking place in Rome face-to-face. Um, good to be back face to face and it will take place from the 16th to 18th of May. So see you then. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks for having me. Look forward to seeing everybody in Rome next spring. Great. Thank you.